Well, first yeah. of all, um, are you like you just you study the Bible, and that's where your knowledge is coming from, or did you do like a school? No, I, I have of, uh, like for divinity or something. Yes, I um, study the Bible, but I also have right. teachers that I um. There's someone right here. Like from your church. Uh, well, not some some at church, but mostly. Um, like a, uh, there's a, um, what do you call it? There's a pastor who has a, uh, he has like, I pretty much, you could call it a school. Super chat. Um, but his name's, uh, Pastor Stephen Moore, and he does a lot of, um, but no, there's, there's teachers that I've, I've, you know, uh, studied, you know, they're, their sermons and their uh, their lectures, like, and you could call it school because it's pretty much it is school, you know. But it's just school from home, more or less. All right. But the but you always take the Bible first, you know, with study right, and prayer. But you know, there's God has, you know, made made uh, teachers for a reason, you know. Right. There are legit people who are meant to teach people about. The word of God. So, what what happened? Exactly. What? Where'd you go? Oh, you're right there. Oh. Bro, you like disappeared on my screen. So yeah, <laughs> I would say um, Stephen Bohr is one of my favorite. Uh, Doug Batchelor, Walter Vive, uh, very very learned, like very blessed people who who have a very good understanding of the Bible and you know. Right. But th but they have used like the Bible to for their to you know. Here's the difference. There's men that like to interpret the Bible, and when they study the Bible, they try to use their own brain and their own knowledge that they think is right to to study and read or, or to teach the Bible, right? Well, when we're reading the right. Bible, we're studying the Bible, and we're teaching the Bible, we don't want to do that. We want to go by what the Holy Spirit, what God tells us through his scripture, what you know, we don't want to. We don't want to take something that is clear in Scripture and try to make it mean something else that it clearly doesn't mean. Okay, so yeah. here's an example: um, creation, six days. God said He created in six days the, the Earth and in the, our galaxy, and then rested on the seventh day. Okay, that language yeah. that's that's used in Genesis is clear, 100%. Uh, non-symbolic language. It's literal days. Right. It doesn't mean billions of years. It doesn't mean millions of years. It, it, there's nowhere in the Bible. This how is how do just... you know that part? Wait, hold how, on. How do you know no. that part is uh isn't like because it I... also says that God has a different sense of time than me... humans because He's eternal. Let me ex finish explaining what I was saying first. Oh, go ahead. Go okay. ahead. So nowhere in the Bible does it suggest that the language being used in Genesis is not literal. And we know um, God doesn't want us to be stupid, doesn't want us to be ignorant, okay? When he when he wants something to be, be symbolic, he lets us know. For instance, in, uh, I think it's in Ezekiel, or it could be, I forget, I, don't, I have to look this up. But there's a, a specific time where he says, okay, for this prophecy, for this time, I'm, a, I'm appointing a day for a year. And that's when we use the day year principle to interpret Bible prophecy. So when, uh, um, and we can, we can, we can confirm that by history. For instance, the 12, there's a prophecy about the 1260 years. Okay. The Antichrist is going to reign for 1260 years. And, uh, we know that, but it, but it says 1260 days. But if we use the day year principle when in, uh, interpreting bi Bible prophecy only, okay. Bible prophecy only do we use this. We, um, we know through history that this there's this power that literally reigned for 1260 years. So we can confirm that the day year principle stands with prophecy and we can confirm it by using history. So history backs us up, okay? So the language used in a specific part of the Bible is 100% clear whether or not it's symbolic or literal, all right? So and, and, and the book of Revelation is a really good example of this when it talks about the dragon and the beast and the, the lion and the bear the three ribs in its mouth. Well, that's Daniel, I think. Um, but Daniel coincides with Revelation. Uh, that's why Jesus tells us to like go look at Revelation and 
and let the reader understand and or Daniel he tells us to go look at Daniel um so they, they co the two books coincide with each other but my point is is that there's there's clear 100% obvious symbolic language versus literal language I mean you you can't mistake the two and it's it's and I'm not, I'm not an English major and I know this you know I, I'm not I didn't go to college but when I'm reading it it's obvious it's 100% obvious and people try to make you know obvious language into something it's not um the Jews the Hebrews understood it to be literal language when they're talking about Genesis you know the creation account and uh everybody else understood it to be literal days it only started it only came to recently okay when um when evolution started coming around in the 1800s by Charles Darwin it was only then did people start trying to uh, sit there and say, well, maybe it wasn't really li six literal days. And it's like, no, it was the six literal days. They just want to match up their fake science beliefs to try to match up the Bible. And uh, you can't do that. Hey, man. Sorry, I'm just uh shooting random people here. Oh, looks like you cleared them out. Yeah, I got them. I, I knocked two. All right, I'm gonna go around. Where's everybody else? I feel like we're by ourselves there's over a, here. There's a crown here. So that's my point. My point is, is that it's like, if you read it, it's it's obviously not, you know, uh, symbolic language, the creation account. And nowhere in the Bible, and anybody else's uh, account, does it ever sit there and suggest that it was uh, symbolic. Nowhere else in the Bible. Everybody is in pretty much agreement of, hey, this is what this means. I see. What's your stance on drinking? Oh, wow. All right, hold on. Where is this? What? I need to heal up real quick. <laughs> I have to f I have to remember I'm not using a uh, uh, here's a drum shock and I guess I'll use that I don't want to use it but I guess I'll use it um stance on drinking well there's lots of verses in the Bible uh one first Corinthians 6 verse 9 talks about how no drunkard will enter the kingdom of heaven but there's lots of other verses in the Bible that that talk about staying away from you know uh strong wine is a mocker you know it talks about strong drink and uh, we should prop we should have a clear mind to properly discern the the will of God and the word of God when we're reading it. Uh, there's no verse. I'm not gonna say or pretend there's no there's a verse that sits there and says no you can't drink, but there is no verse that says thou shalt not drink alcohol, thou shalt not drink wine, blah 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 blah. And people yeah. people will sit there and 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 in the in the old times, wine was used synonymously. It was not it was, so alcoholic wine was not uh, used, was used in the same sense as non-alcoholic wine, so grape juice in other words, okay? Right. So when Jesus made fresh wine, fresh wine has no, is not alcoholic. Fresh, it's fresh grape juice. So you have to let it ferment for weeks, okay? So when Jesus makes fresh wine, people automatically think alcohol. Well, no, you have to, we're talking about fresh uh, juice off the vine. When it's right off the vine, it's not alcoholic. Oh, wow, there's a tank. Did you know there's a tank right here, guys? <laughs> okay, not my best idea. Oh. Oh, big Edward, big. Super chat. I got nine kills. That was huge. <laughs> You're a nasty man for that. Yeah, right, let's go res over here real quick. Yeah, let me heal up. I'm in heaven right now.
Jake with the super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat, Jake. Edward Breach with the clutch. That was a pretty dope clutch. Very dope clutch. Where's all the loot from that fight? Is it, is it in the storm? Okay. Yeah. That's alright. We it's worth it to go in there and get the shields and stuff. True. We get this blue. I'm gonna go ahead and get a rocket launcher just in case. I can heal the boys up when y'all get back if someone gets me a shield though. People someone picked up all the rockets. Could you guys drop some rockets please? Oh, you gotta drop him. You gave him to Hey, Valak. hey, uh, I have a, I have a, oh uh, no, my controller's broken, it's so hard for me to drop stuff. Who's this? Did someone hire Jonesy? Yeah, I did. Okay. Can I drop they those rockets, they, please? They dropped, they dropped. Oh, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, someone took minis? I need some minis. I have them here. Anybody got a half bots? Oh, you got splashes? Why are you splashing without me, bro? What are you doing? That's a new move, bro. What are you doing? He was nervous. Because we have the real Edward Preaches in here. Super chat. So, like I said, there's nothing that says no, you know, you, you can't uh, sit there and drink. But there's a lot of verses that say avoid strong drink. And no drunk would enter the kingdom of heaven. So, like... You know, I would say it's best to avoid it, because I know people that will get up drunk off of one drink. Okay. Right. But but like I like I said, um, I I can't tell. At least I at least I don't know. Like when we join, when we get baptized, about, in, when we get baptized into the in our church, it, there's a baptism vow about like not doing uh, drinking alcohol. But I mean, I can't sit really? here and I can't sit here and say uh, I'm pretty sure there's a back, there's a baptism vow about that. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure there is. But anyways, I can't uh, I can't sit here and say yeah it's a sin to drink a beer once in a while. Um, but I, you know, like I said, uh, there, no drunkard will inherit the kingdom of heaven. So and to me, that's talking about people who are like drunk all the time and you know alcoholics pretty much. You know. All right. But so I think I think further study and prayer would be an individual thing on that topic for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right here. Right here. What do you think about? Oh, I see him. Oh, I clipped him once. I can't believe I need to lower my sensitivity. Hold on. I lower my sensitivity. Got him knocked right there. There's a truck. I see him. Oh, man. Knocked or killed, Bottom. killed that guy. Yeah. Fifty shield didn't hit on that guy. He's gonna run to the left, probably. Maybe not. Okay, he didn't. He ran to the right. We need to. We need to find the next uh, uh, high uh, high ground and take that before somebody else does. Over there, right? We need to go there now. All right. Here, Let's do it. Wait, that's not over there. We're talking about the storm's gonna uh, collapse there. Oh, you're right. Oh man, that's bad. We can do uh, the next one over there. Oh, there's someone already up there. I, I, he lasered him. He's got no health. All right, preach. Do you believe in this match? Because I think we're gonna get a dub. <laughs> well, it's definitely gonna be a good YouTube video. Reach clutches for dub. Why did he do that? Why did he do that, bro? That was the dumbest idea he could have ever done. <laughs> I'm gonna get on the zip line and get lasered. <laughs> Oh wow, I just got sniped. What do you know? I'll get him. 
Yes. Yeah, right there. Yep. Nice. There we go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Easy job. Let's go. How many? How many is that? How many? What's the stats? Where's the stats? God wanted us to win together. We got twelve elims. Twelve elims. Four assists. Yummy. GGs. No, good questions. GGs, good bro. questions. I spoke to God when nice. I was down in heaven before you revived me, and he said, no, I'm going to send you back to get this dub. <laughs>